Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Sean ustedes bienvenidos a la entrevista. Hoy estamos en las instalaciones de la Embajada Británica en la Ciudad de México para hablar con Sir Eric Pickles. Sir Eric Pickles es el SAF anticorrupción del Reino Unido. Sir Eric Pickles es un miembro del Parlamento del Reino Unido que tiene una gran trayectoria, es miembro del Partido Conservador, es conocido por sus opiniones muy abiertas y esto por supuesto le ha generado eh, toda suerte de controversias y lo ha llevado también a uno de los puestos más importantes y de los que yo creo mucho tenemos que aprender los mexicanos. Vamos a hacer esta conversación en inglés con subtítulos para que usted pueda escuchar directamente a Sir Eric in in su voz natural, Sir Eric, it's a pleasure to to uh, have you here at La Entrevista. And please let me know. Uh, we always think of Great Britain. We always think of, as the UK as a country that doesn't have corruption. We believe countries like Mexico have corruption, but but is there corruption in the UK? Yeah, corruption's everywhere. Every, I dare say, from from the Vatican City right the way through uh, to the favelas of uh, uh, in Brazil, there's, there's corruption everywhere. Um, and we've had to take a number of quite uh, uh, serious measures uh, in order to deal with it. Uh, we introduced um, a bribery act. Um, we're currently working on um, a piece of legislation uh, called benefit ownership, which will determine we will know who owns what, so you won't be able to hide uh, mm -hmm. behind different companies. Although, in fact, we see countries like the United States in which that kind of legislation just doesn't exist, and in fact, uh, uh, people are able to hide property behind corporations, uh, so that won't be possible in the UK anymore? From the, uh, be, we made the law, and from the beginning of June next year, uh, the register will be there and it will be open to uh, inspection. And what we want to see is Mexico, um, parts of Europe, all start to become part of this great family, so that people can't hold property in secret. Is the fact that uh, various countries have different legislation uh, on corruption, uh, does that make it more difficult for the authorities to actually uh, uh, curb, uh, curb uh, corrupt corruption practices? Well, we're looking for partners and I think mm -hmm. it's important to kind of understand that we now live in a world where money can move from Mexico City to Manchester to Madrid to Milan, like that. Mm -hmm. You are in Mexico right now. Have you made any kind of agreement with uh, Mexican authorities regarding uh, um, shared practices or any kind of an agreement uh, that would help us fight corruption? The, the, I've, I've met uh, uh, NGOs, I've met people from government, I've met people from the private sector, and the degree of cooperation is, is, is pretty enthusiastic. And um, we're hoping to work alongside uh, officials uh, in the Mexican government to do a number of things. First, to offer a little bit of help in terms of, of drafting legislation, taking some examples that we've been using, but more particularly to start to look in terms of guidelines and work practices and getting together a team that, that know how to investigate and to prosecute. Because the truth is this, my friend, mm -hmm. you can have the best laws in the world, the most beautifully written laws, Unless you enforce them, they're worthless. Sir Eric, some people claim that corruption is cultural or that it's related to certain ethnic groups. What do you think? I think mean, that's racist, mm -hmm. and I think it's stupid. And I think um, that uh, there is nothing that is cultural about, about corruption, because corruption robs a citizen. It creates poverty, it creates um, resentment, it can create uh, revolution. So it's in the interest of everybody, whether it's somebody taking a backhander or whether it's organized crime, um, laundering money. It's taking money and it's taking resources out of the mouths of the poor. Is, uh, is uh, legislation on corruption becoming standardized in the European Union? Yes, I think it is. And I think there's, given that the nature that money can be moved around very quickly, there, is, there has to be a high degree of cooperation. Mm -hmm. I think the degree of cooperation between Mexico and the United Kingdom is, 
is, uh, is, is really good. Um, that's largely because, of course, Mexico is a key, absolutely key ally. Uh, and our economies but become why, integrated. Why is Mexico a key ally in, in this um, war against corruption? I'll just, just look at where the uh, Mexican economy is going. Um, it's, it's going to, Mexico is going to become more and more and more prosperous. It's going to become more of a world player. As we move towards the end of this century, Mexico um, could well be um, a massively important world force. Now, all our economies are, are, are linked. And I think um, we can jointly serve notice to the corrupt official, to the corrupt businessman, that the party's over and that modern technology and modern ways of doing business are going to squeeze you out. Um, Sir Eric, what made you uh, interested in corruption or fighting corruption at first? I mean, what was the, uh, this is something that must have sparked your interest? Well, so if you look right across the world and you see any um, country, if there's a high degree of corruption there, one thing you'll also find is that there's a high degree of poverty there, mm -hmm. that there's, uh, there's a high degree of discrimination there. And tackling corruption is a way, I think, of tackling uh, social evil. I don't know how much you've, you've, you've got a chance uh, here in Mexico to see the practices that we have against corruption. Do you have any, any um, words of advice for the Mexican government or for us Mexicans to try to fight corruption? It is, it is after all, one of our main uh, political and social concerns. I think, um, if I could presume to uh, mm -hmm. offer advice, mm -hmm. I think there are various things that we need to understand. First of all, there is no magic bullet against corruption. There's no single measure that you can take that will say, right, we've done it. It's got to be a combination of, uh, of measures. I think the most important thing is that everybody should be equal under the law, and that mm. politicians who are asking uh, to um, uh, the population to deal with corruption. I remember Margaret Thatcher making yeah. that point yeah. uh, many years ago. <laughs> say that you, you know, we all should be equal uh, under the law. But in terms of a practical, you can't change everything overnight. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be very sensible to look either at a sector mm -hmm. or uh, say a state or say a big project like the airport project and say, let us make that project, that state, this sector, absolutely as near corruption free as we can. Lots of transparency, lots of openness where deals done on the golf course, deals done um, uh, at a private club, deals done between family members just simply can't happen because everything's out in the open. And I think once people see the advantage of, of that, it'll make a big change. Just being, I just come from a meeting um, uh, from Mexico City. They're producing some really interesting work in terms of providing uh, services uh, to the population digitally where there is no discretion in terms of land registry or getting a license and the like, where, the, where there is no officials between them and the service. And I think it's increasingly that kind of thing that will gradually push corruption out. Is it difficult for a public official, however, to be uh, under inspection at all times, even to the level of the paperclip? Is I think it difficult uh, for you? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's what life is about. I mm -hmm. mean, I... Um, I'm a member of parliament. We mm -hmm. had a, uh, a scandal a few years That's ago. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, members of parliament went to prison. Mm -hmm. uh, members of parliament's careers came to an end uh, because they put in false expenses claims. Now, none of this was a large, ever a large sum of money. I think the largest mm -hmm. sum was about uh, 60,000 US dollars. Um, but it's the principle that's important. It's not our money. It's the public's money. And if, the, if lawmakers aren't being absolutely scrupulous, how can you expect um, a taxi driver or someone selling flowers on the street to, to adhere to a higher moral code? Com uh, confidence, public confidence in Mexican politicians is at uh, record lows right now. What's the situation in the UK? Uh, I mean, I think universally everybody hates politicians. Mm -hmm. 
we, we generally come pretty low down in, 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 uh, um, in the esteem. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a problem for you? I mean, there are some people, I've, I've followed your career, I know who you are, and, you know, what you've done over the, over the decades. Uh, isn't it uh, difficult for someone who's actually uh, committed to public life uh, because, uh, because they want to do something? Uh, is, is it difficult to do what you do because of that? Because of that le level of confidence? I'm on the side of, <laughs> of skepticism. I'm on the side of distrust. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some countries in the world where the, um, uh, the president's birthday is celebrated, mm -hmm. where everybody has to turn up in a big uh, parade and clap. That's right. Uh, while from, I don't want to live that kind of world. You know, it's a citizen that needs to be absolutely supreme. It's a citizen that should be able to tap you on the shoulder and say, look, Sir Eric, what the heck's going on? I want to know. And I have to tell you, my constituents, say, I've got plenty of people who will do that. And that is a good thing. How is an anti-corruption czar chosen in, in the UK? Well, basically my job, I'm not a prosecutor. Yeah. Uh, my job is to get government policy together, get the agencies working. We've got a, um, a, uh, an anti-corruption strategy. It's my job to get, make sure that happens. We've got some new streams of things. And it's my job to use my powers of persuasion mm -hmm. and general niceness to bring various uh, ministers <laughs> together to get them to do stuff. And it was a, but do I, you report to the Prime Minister? Yeah. Do you report to the Parliament? I, I, I report to the Prime Minister. Yeah. Did, uh, does he, did he choose you personally? He personally chose me. Yes, and yeah. he, must have, he must have seen something. What do you think he saw in you? <laughs> well, I, I've known the Prime Minister an, an awful long time. We've worked mm. together on a number of projects. And uh, I was really honoured uh, to do this. We're likely to have a, um, a big conference uh, in, uh, um, in uh, latter part of April or early May uh, on anti-corruption, which we're kind of hoping that um, uh, Mexico would come to. So, I mean, it's, 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 this is a substantial issue, and it's just a wonderful thing to be able to try and tackle it. Do you think you can make a contribution to British society then? Well, I, you kind of hope you... Whatever you do, you want to kind of make a, a, a contribution. But what I want to do is to just try and make it that little bit more difficult to be corrupt, mm -hmm. that little bit more easy to be honest. And that's essentially where it's, it's, it's like almost like an arms race. You've just got to persuade the citizen it's a better way of being honest. Like this, uh, like this new data sharing that we're seeing in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. The citizen is getting a better service, and it's a more honest service. Eric Pickles, uh, anti-corruption czar of the United Kingdom, thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Y a usted, amigo televidente, que hace posible este programa, se lo agradezco también. Esto es todo por hoy, pero no se le olvide. Nos vemos la próxima.